much of my story you know. I've got a mom who was diagnosed about nine years ago. And at the time I was in the pharmaceutical industry and had been there for 20 years and decided at that point in life at 43 to go back to grad school and get a PhD. You've heard me talk about the apathy and the anxiety and the stress and employment and how do you cope? You know, all of these things that are um, critically important to quality of life. Online, I found a, a copy of your survey that you're currently circulating, and I started taking it, and, uh, and it's, it's pretty long, but it's not, it's not monotonous long. It's interesting, interesting long. You know, it gains interest as you go through it because I've never taken a survey where the questions were that um, appropriate, where the questions were that insightful. Some research and say, does it? How does apathy affect quality of life? How does loneliness affect quality of life, right? So we've got all of these, these covariates that we need to consider to say, do these things really matter? So I said, what area can I learn about and work in? And I thought, what about the mind? What about all of these things that are cognitive issues, right? Memory, um, you know, what are the effects of apathy where does apathy start how do we get it people can view parkinson's as either a horrible disease and it's the worst thing that's ever happened to them versus some people actually can view it as this is a blessing to me and, and i've i have a new life and a new way of viewing things and uh, that's the psychological range i mean two people can have the exact same symptoms and see the disease in two totally different ways and I, at the time, there had been 13 articles published on employment and Parkinson's disease. And interestingly, none of them were done on YOPD. It, uh, I have a friend whose father has dementia and she goes and works out with her dad. And every single time they work out, he goes through the screaming and the, why are you doing this to me? And this is terrible. And then as soon as he's done, he feels better. I, th I think everybody's looking for that holy grail. What's the best exercise for someone with Parkinson's disease? That's the first question. The second question is what's the dose around? Because do, I, again, I just go back to Mike's question. If you're exercising, I'm, I might argue, are you truly apathetic? So uh, YOPD counsel. And we were talking about what is it that every patient who is newly diagnosed with young onset Parkinson's disease needs to know? Needs to be a relationship with the patient and the movement disorder doctor. At 28, I want to talk to somebody who's 28 years old who's had Parkinson's or close to it. Yeah. Well, how did it progress? What was the first thing you noticed? What do you wish you knew? What do you know today that you wished you had known the day you were diagnosed? Oh. Because when I got into it, looking at Parkinson's, I kept hearing, well, young onset's only 10%. And I said, well, so is it any less significant? The note about right here, this is what matters. How do I connect with you? And how do I let you connect with me? And what can we build together?